Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of the Coach's Corner. Um, we have an old flame on the couch. <laughs> He's <Back>. preparing. <laughs> <laughs> Steven's back. back. Steven's back. In the prime seat yeah. too. Yeah, look at you. He's so relaxed. Yeah. Where's your you. holidays? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, big Bahamas trip. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Looking very chill. <laughs> I don't know how to steal this quarter seat anyway. <laughs> Upgrade from Lenka? Yeah. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> Lenka? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I'm joking, Lenka. So. Tell us your experience of intervals. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk about it. I mean, let's just say that was a bad day. Didn't end well. <laughs> you won though. I did win. I did I earned the spot time into the king. I also did vomit. Because of it, but <laughs> hey, I won. Abby, you can explain this. But you felt amazing afterwards, right? Yeah, I did feel. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. How long, how long did it take you? It took me, I, I had a timer on my, on my clock and it took me 28 minutes to recover. 28 really? minutes of, of a minute's worth of work. That's saying yeah. something about our fitness, though, as well. Yeah, from a health perspective, a fat loss perspective, it is important to do both forms of cardio. We focused on interval training on Friday basically because it is an easier form. Not an easier form, I should say. But, uh, <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> it's definitely not an easier form. More efficient. But it's more efficient. More efficient. Yeah. From um, a time perspective, so when you've got your steady state, which is walking or long endurance, like you're cycling, you're walking, um, swimming, it can take longer. Where your intervals, we did 30 seconds. Um, of work. Just four, four times. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are cooked. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. <laughs> so, uh, like of oh, max effort. It was we, max we went effort. hard. We yeah. did go hard. Yeah, so basically the benefits of max effort is to increase your um, VO2 max, so your work capacity. Now, when you're working at a steady state, so like walking or um, you know, your long endurance, you're burning predominantly fat. And when you're working at a high intensity, you're working at your using glycogen or carbohydrates as your stores of energy. Um, and so we did it because it does help with fat loss. Um, so we want to include that in our program. It improves overall wellness, but it also includes like feelings of well-being too. So if you want to feel healthier, it has found that it does help to promote that as well. So um, visceral fat, so you've got your, um, Get the word there. Add the outer layer of visceral fat. Anyway. What? Adipose. So, oh. Yeah, adipose. And then you've got visceral. So the visceral fat is the fat that's around your organs. Yeah. So if you have a higher amount of visceral fat, you're at a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes. Right. So basically, if we're doing cardio, we're reducing our risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes. Um, that's type 2 diabetes, just to clarify. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Yeah. Anyone get in trouble? Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's an important element of training. So we should be including at least two days a week of good cardio. Mm. Kind of so, bang for your buck, as yeah. opposed to just stay just yeah. like mm. yeah. People and don't do it because it's more efficient. Right? Yeah. It's so hard for people like in terms of like their capacity, but you yeah. get a lot more benefits than, than just yeah. fat burning out of it, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. And so like you know you get bigger, yeah, be a twenty minute, you could do yeah, a twenty minute quick. workout yeah. and get really good benefits from that. And it will carry over to like your other training because yes. it will increase your work capacity and not just your training but your life. Like you yeah. know, if you're going out and everything, so you'll be fitter. So, yeah. Yeah. And it improves your ability to burn fat too. Yeah. So it just increases your mitochondria, which is in all of your cells and your muscles. So they're your powerhouse. So give them energy. Powerhouse. I mean, it depends on how you feel, I guess. Depends. Like if you feel tired and lethargic all the time, then. Mm probably are stressing your body too much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think with like, um, when people go wrong with the whole like overtraining, overreaching thing, is like, they think more is better. When most of the time it's not, because first you look at like, okay, you can train seven times a week, can you recover from that? Um, are you actually training too much? Are you actually overreaching, which is actually have detrimental effects on your training gains anyway? Um, so you try to look at it like, okay, what can I do to get a good training effect without actually going over. That's we, that's a, we call like the sweet spot of training kind of thing. Um, and then if you combine that with, well, you don't know this person is even eating properly. If you're if you're eating like 
you're not like an adult, like if you're not eating fruit, like it's, it's true, like fruit, vegetable, like protein, you're not sleeping, like stuff we should be doing and you're like, training seven days a week, then I'll probably recommend probably not training seven days a week. Um, if, you, if you can't recover, you're pretty much just wasting your time training seven days a week if you can't even supplement with good nutrition, good hydration, good um, sleep. Um, so I'll probably like change it pretty quickly. It depends on the person, exactly like Megan said. Um, if you can't tolerate that much, then don't do seven days a week. If you find you've been training for 10 years, like, and that's another thing, you gotta look at longevity. Is seven days a week sustainable long term, or like, are you gonna be doing this for another 10 years? Are you just gonna be doing seven sessions and killing yourself and end up like being unmotivated, um, everything like that? So, um, yeah, highly dependent on the person. Some people can get away with seven sessions a week, they're highly trained. Um, but you gotta look at all aspects, bigger picture, rather than. Yeah, yeah, you look big. You look big picture. It's I think, recovery. I think it's very common as well. Like very you, common, we yeah. see it all the time where um, someone is new into coming in um, and they're wanting to try train like five or six days a week from not doing anything as well. So yeah. you know, we wouldn't advise going in at a max intensity right from the very beginning. Um, you gotta kind of look at it as, as well like stepping stones. So like a progressive nature too. So um, ticking all the boxes off. At, like from doing no training at all, then going into like six or seven days of training or, or five days of training, like can you actually sustain that, you know, for a long period of time? And the other, the other thing as well is that training is a stress itself. So if you go from nothing to seven days a week, I guarantee you'll be seeing a physio in a few weeks' time because your tolerance, your capacity to um, tolerate seven days isn't there yet. It's not there. Like maybe do it in a few years once you've started three days and then kind of build up from there. You just get injured if yeah. you do do that as well. So as long as you do recover, right? Mm. That's the biggest thing because that's yeah. that's the whole purpose of what we're doing. Like you said, training is a stress, yeah. and you know what we actually summer. the benefits that we do get is when we recover and your body adapts to it. So that's yeah. where that's where you get your benefits from. So exactly. like it is pretty individual, and like if you're varying intensities and you can recover it from it, then maybe seven days is enough. But as long as you do recover, because that's where you get the benefits from. That's yeah. where our body's adapting to the stress from training. Mode, mode of control. Yeah, mode of control, low weight, now the technique. Yeah. Um, Strengthening up the glutes. Yeah, yeah. glutes is Particularly the glute beads. Yeah. So glute beads, that's what's, um, a lot of the time that's inactive in people because it's, it's kind of like a, the smaller muscle yeah. on the side. So um, that's what, if that's inactive and weak, you don't really like, know how to activate, like, you know, use them, then that's what they're going to cave in. If they're, mm -hmm. if they're strong and you're aware of them, then they'll, they'll pull yeah. your knees back out. That's See, activation as well. Yeah. Activation yeah. Right. Yeah. Tension mm -hmm. the floor too from your feet. feet. So yeah. you think about like driving your feet into the ground and sl like pushing out, mm -hmm. coming from the ground up, you're going to have more tension through all of your legs. Yeah, that's yeah. one people forget because they could just be um, overly um, pronated to so their feet coming yeah. in and they're like, oh, my knees keep coming in. Well, it could be your your foot stability is actually mm -hmm. weak. It could not be your knees or your glutes. It could just depend yeah. again. Yeah. Like, yeah. There are a couple of things. I do um, a little good cue with my clients is that like I, I instruct them that if your feet are like a tripod, so which camera we're going? Let's go on. Let's go on this one. So you have a, a point here, a point here, and a point here on both feet, and then as you're coming up to squat, you're trying to externally rotate them outwards. That also pushes the knees out, and then it, 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 it tracks the glutes at the top as well. So. Um, and they find they get a lot of power too and a lot of connection with the floor. Um, that really helps with pushing their knees out. So even the technique about that. Um, coaching cues, like we, we, we instruct, you know, if we do see the knees come in, you know, we easily just say like, push those knees out, focus on that. So trying to change where your focus is can also help too, keeping them out. Train arms. <laughs> <laughs> You want to get bigger arms, you got to train them. That's my best tip. Steve, what are your tips? Yeah, look at oh. you. <laughs> I don't think pipes. Honestly, like, I think you should get, um, like, your compounds in first. So, like, majority of your arm work, like, unless you want to get more advanced, will come from doing compounds, so presses and pulls and Rose. everything. Like, you'll get, like, decent arms from that. Yeah. Um, and then, but probably, the person asking you probably wants to go beyond that. So, yeah. So like right. Luke said, just put the work in with the arm, mm. like, extra volume. Um, I think the biggest one for me, if, like training any muscle group, you want to understand what the function of the muscle is. So if you're trying to like train triceps, 
okay, what do the triceps, the triceps do? Extend the elbow. So you gotta look at exercises that do that. And you look at how many heads is there. Where does the long head cross across the shoulder? Should I be doing just push downs and that's it? Or should I be doing overhead stuff which involves shoulder flexion as well? Um, I think it's important that if you're gonna look in at an arm program to take into those factors as well. So you do get all aspects of the triceps yeah. as well. Oh, the bicep, for example. Um, Using like head, short head. the compound moves too, like Steve was saying, so you want to have that um, indirect training volume on the arms. Um, it's going to be important, like things like this, well, like chin ups, um, post grip presses. Um, I'd also like when you go into like the just the single moves directly training like biceps or triceps, I'd say don't do too much of anything that's way too heavy and then having lower reps because that's when. Because it's only a small muscle, you know, you're going to start to have other muscles taking over, and like a lot of it has to do, to do with mind-muscle connection too. So, looking at your higher rep range um, and and trying to focus on trying to con contract the muscle, trying to lengthen Technique the muscle. Everything. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, frequency. That's going to be a big point too. So, um, yeah, vary exercises, different angles. Yeah, you've got strength curves too, so you could do, um, you know, like. An overhead cable extension is going to be a different strength curve as opposed to, you know, like doing like a tricep dip. Um, yeah, like so, I would say like barrier exercises as well. But have an understanding, like yeah. what you're saying, of like uh, how, like in this case, the arms, like what their purpose is, what the role is. Yeah. That, that way, you're not just doing an exercise just because you saw someone do it or you're just doing it. Oh, you want to like understand why you're doing it and then. You know, you have like a yeah. much more If you can understand why, it's like, okay, you're doing bicep curls and you're flicking your wrist. Yeah. Well, does the bicep cross the wrist joint? No. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just like understanding that and then kind of applying it to your training. Mm -hmm. You see people use their body, like, do you do quads across your biceps? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> That's right. Why are you using your legs in the bicep yeah. curl? Yeah. Like, take, your, <laughs> take your egos out of it too, yeah. you know, um, and going down lighter and actually working on muscle that you want to work, you're going to get a lot better results as opposed to yeah. lifting something heavy and then swinging with momentum. Yeah. And controlling, yeah. like you said, the mind-muscle connection. Yeah. Actually controlling the resistance, like eccentric as well. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get more out of each rep compared yeah. to just letting gravity and momentum take That's right. I think, look, I think that momentum and things like that has, has its time and place, you know, especially when like things are starting to fatigue, um, to try and push out more volume. But, you know, first, first and foremost is make sure that the, your, your form is on point. You know, that's yeah. where you're going to get the best results. And don't curl in the squat right? <laughs> <laughs> I did say that to someone the other day. Yeah, how's that? Are you really doing bicep curls in the squat rack? He's like, we programmed it! <laughs> I didn't program girls in the squat rack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought about that. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, make sure you do them in the squat rack. Bet, better gains. <laughs> well, I, actually, I found though, um, uh, doing bicep curls, doing it on like an actual barbell, because it rotates and spins, is a lot a lot less stress off the, on the wrist as well as opposed to having something that's fixed and that doesn't spin. It's, yeah. it's not as bad here as Bob Bob. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. Right. Yeah. If there's yeah. one squat rack and you and curls in it, you're all messed yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's right. It's true, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't, be, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. So you're saying it's alright to buy some curls with you? Out here, you know. Yeah. 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 I can get it. Just like everything else, it depends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wherever you're at, there's going to be at least like two free spot like yeah. places. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to do that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Just don't be that douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> and say, oh, Scott Club said we can do it. <laughs> well, you've only got one. There goes our reputation. <laughs> oh, cool. They're those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Well done. Thanks very much for your questions. If you have more questions for next week, make sure you shoot them through to our Instagram page, Scott Club AU. See you guys next week. Yeah. Same time, yeah. same place. Monday, 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 eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.